Hi everyone, this is Vanessa, also known as the International Immigrant, and welcome to my podcast. This is a place where we discuss everything immigration related, from the desire to work in another country for a few years to test the waters, to studying abroad in the hopes of opening up some opportunities and, of course, full immigration with a cargo container of furniture and a residence visa stamped in your passport. If this is the first time and you want to know who I am and why I started this podcast, please watch or listen to the first episode as there are both audio and video versions available. Today, I am going to be chatting to a friend that I met when I was teaching English in Costa Rica. We were both interested in spirituality and different modalities like numerology, for example, and spent a few hours in my whole of an apartment that I have spoken about before discussing these ideologies. He's one of the sweetest people I've ever met, and I'm so happy to be chatting to him today. So please welcome Derek. Hey, honey, it's good to see you. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so just quickly introduce yourself. Let us know where you live, your current situation, and um, what you're doing for work. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm Derek. Right now I'm back in Boston. Um, I'm from Boston, but yeah, I was traveling around a bit. But um, because of COVID, I'm here for a little longer than I expected, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, for work, I'm, I'm teaching online, um, and I was working a little bit for a friend in Australia, actually doing some like bookkeeping stuff. So, um, yeah. Keeping yourself so that, busy. Like we all are trying to, yeah. Trying to kind of find, I don't know. Yeah, just really try to find things to figuring keep figuring it out. And it's amazing exactly. how many people I speak to, like you know, Lacey, and Lacey was on a few weeks ago, and she was saying, you know, she's been trying to figure stuff out, and we're all trying to figure it's, stuff out with this pandemic. I'm stuck in South Africa with my folks, trying to figure out how to get back home to North America, yes. which is the only place that feels like <laughs> home to me. And so, yeah, we're just all trying to figure stuff out. It's a big unknown which is yeah everyone's trying to figure it out Although which is all, at like, the moment literally. you wonderfully do not have so much unknown anymore but we will get to that in a minute is, yeah. first of all tell me how did you find teaching in costa rica um the the teaching part of it i think was a little i it felt a little like hectic um it was it was a great experience um, mm. to have students of all ages and like connecting with being able to connect with your students on a, you know, a more like a different level. Mm -hmm. They weren't just kids, which was what I was used to before. Um, but yeah, I think the classes I, from what I was used to, the classes are lo much longer. They were like, yeah, three hours, a little unstructured structured yeah <laughs> they feel... were they were I mean we worked <laughs> for a doozy of an academy and we're not going to name the name but oh my god they were so unprofessional in a lot of respects and so not yeah, focused I yeah like, yeah I just kind of I don't know it was a, I felt a bit all over the place a little like stressed and mm. I think living in Costa Rica was awesome I think um I loved, I, I enjoyed the culture and I don't know, I kind of started learning Spanish again and I'm still taking lessons now with, uh, with Ana actually. Um, and like loving that. So I think having less of a communication barrier was awesome. Um, the culture was awesome. But yeah, the work was intense. I feel like yeah. there was, it was a lot of, work <laughs> yeah so we were uh, all doing more we were all doing more lesson planning than actually teaching because every yes. class had been taught at some point before but the school required us to create a brand new lesson plan for every single class that we taught and every mm. unit that we taught and as you said we had three hour group sessions 
private classes were two hours with one or two people. And yeah. was there anything? There were private classes and group classes and then conversation classes that were two hours. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, which, yeah, I did a little bit. Um, yeah, I just, but, but yeah, like you said, we needed to, everyone needed to plan the lesson again. It was like redoing work that someone else had already done. Right. Which I didn't, I didn't understand, but I don't think anyone understood. Um, no, I mean, I think providing us with the basic lesson plans for like each one and then saying, please be creative, please come up with games, can, please come up with something. Right. Yeah, would have but been better. It, some structure to go off of would be, would have been awesome. Um, but I think it, I think it but like bonded all of us more. I mean, we were really all bonded, these teachers, by this experience. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, we all had that in common. We um, were, and we were all like asking each other questions, like, okay, trying to get ideas from people. What did you do for this lesson? And what game, <laughs> like, after a while, you feel like you're repeating the same games because you are. You are. Um, so... Yeah, it was definitely, it definitely did kind of bring us together, I think. Um, one good thing that came out of teaching at this place, place. Um, <laughs> um, I learned so much English myself. I know, right? <laughs> with, you know, I can obviously speak English. I know how to speak English and what sounds correct, but um learning the names of all these rules or the names of the tenses or whatever I didn't know that so that is something I learned and I do now catch people <laughs> if I hear things that don't sound right I'm like ooh, I know I just I know things I don't know it's weird so that is one thing that I learned I guess so that was good it was. Uh, and it's so funny because I learned how I don't get me wrong. I love our language. Like I love English. I really do. I love it. But I say to my students, it's like a bunch of drunk people got together and made up this <laughs> language because the rules, a lot of the rules don't make sense. And I say to them, I'm so sorry. Yeah. You just have to learn it. Like I can't change it. It doesn't make sense. And I know. And you're learning Spanish. I learned a bit of Spanish. I learned a bit of French. There's kind of very specific rules in those languages and in English it's like well we kind of didn't really have something for this group of words over here so we'll just make something <laughs> yeah it's really all the rules are broken at some point and pronunciation and I don't know structure but yeah there's so many confusing parts of English and I yeah, yeah. you just have to say this is it. So, you We're know, you, sorry. Some, you can't, <laughs> yeah, you can't always answer the student's questions, which isn't helpful, but it's, it's how it is. Yeah. But I think if you're just, I mean, I heard you because, you know, the walls were thin and we heard each other teaching and I heard you teaching yeah. and you were a fun teacher and, and I had fun with my students. And I think if, if they just know that you really care about them and you want them to yeah. learn and that if you could change the rule, you would, but just try and get them rounded as best as possible, they still have a yeah. good time. And it's a very uncomplicated language. It's just that it has some bizarre little rules for bizarre <laughs> little groups of words. But um, yeah, you mentioned that it was different from your teaching experience in Thailand. So I've only had the Costa Rica teach, um, student uh classroom experience so that was my knowledge about it how was it different to thailand um okay so in in thailand well obviously in costa rica we taught all ages mm -hmm. and all levels of english in thailand we were i was in a, a little private school so i was given i taught all of the third grade so I had one class that I spent the most time with. They were the IEP, Intensive English Program. Mm -hmm. So they, they essentially paid more money to have me be with them all the time. So they could right. learn English better, like quickly. And, 
And then the other three classes were also third grade, but they, I had them, I think each twice a week, but regardless, I was teaching the same age group, the same material, um, at the same time. So if I had to plan, uh, you know, lesson for chapter three, well, I taught it to every class right? instead of in Costa Rica, I, it was all different levels, all different books, all different topics and stuff. So that was nicer. Um, and just, yeah, I think, um, I was with my, that main class of students all the time. So I think it was really nice. Like they were my first students and I don't know, they really, you really got to know them. Right. And I think in Costa Rica, you got to know your students, but we were switched around and we were. they switched teachers and stuff. So I feel like I didn't build a connection with my students as strongly as maybe my other students, mm. even though my students in Thailand were like nine years old, but um, <laughs> you still like learned things about them. And then they yeah. really trusted you and talked, like told me things about them. And it was really cool. I still have them on Facebook and stuff, some of them. Really? So they'll, when a student messaged me the other night. Um, yeah, they just randomly will message me. So it's kind of funny. And then hopefully I can, I'd love to visit them one day before they leave that school. Well, you will, uh, because we're going to get on to where you are going next uh, soon. And then, yeah. you know, definitely, but, um, but I agree. And I, that's why I liked, because um, I sort of mentioned in my first video that I was a lot older than the other teachers and respects because you know I'm, I'm mm. 48 in a couple of months oh my god sweet mother of god <laughs> I'm almost 50 um and so I preferred private students and so I had a few private students oh. that I managed to hold on to most of the time I was there and I was able to get quite close to them and so I know what you mean by that like I had a good relationship with them I still do and I really enjoyed that aspect of it yeah, like you're, you're just able to connect and then you can kind of, I don't know, it, it makes the class more interesting if you're talking about things that you can kind of relate it to things that they are interested in or. Um, yes, correct. The, yeah, you are you, so correct. I loved that, that like if I couldn't explain, I'd, I'd look at her and I, or him and I'd go, okay, I know like the one, I love American football, you know this, and one of my guys loved American football. And so I would just take it into that avenue to kind of explain yeah. something. And yeah, you can. You can and then it makes much. sense mm. for them. It, yes. it kind of, yeah, they, they get a better understanding of, when they can relate to it other rather than you i don't know just talking Teaching about at them exactly yeah, yeah. exactly and um, i kind of felt like you're teaching with them you're kind of bringing them into that space right and they're they're in it they're involved in more and it, yeah it's definitely it was definitely a different experience um and then obviously with, with them being kids, it was, it was just fun. Cause you could, they were just fun. They, they, you were in, you were a foreign teacher. So you, I was the coolest human they've ever seen. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so they just wanted to know everything about me. And then for holidays, you can kind of, we made it fun and we brought them around the hall, like trick or treating. Oh, so they went to each classroom and they loved it. So so things like that and then little like things for Christmas um they walked in and like I had a little Christmas tree with all oh, these sweet. everyone had a little bag of candy or whatever it was and stickers and you gave them really nothing and they were so pumped um yeah stuff like that it was just so ah, it was so fun um yeah so, and then from a social aspect, okay, so let's move from teaching to social, like between Thailand <clears throat> and Costa Rica, because I knew you in Costa Rica, I didn't know you in Thailand, from a social aspect, where did you have the most fun? Mm. 
Ooh, that's a tough one. I think, hmm, I don't, I guess while I was teaching, I think I would say Thailand. Um, Thailand was obviously like, I, I mean, I don't speak Thai, so <laughs> I, you know, tried my best to get around, but we had so much, I had so much more time in Thailand to travel and I found that it was so much easier to travel. So, um, you know, there were other English teachers from, you know, the U S or Canada or where, wherever, and we could, we could hop on a plane Friday and, you know, spend an island, uh, weekend on an Island or something. And it was awesome. And right. whereas like, I feel like in Costa Rica, we didn't, I didn't travel as much as I had hoped to, because I feel like we didn't have the time. We didn't really. It, you know and, I mean? um, we didn't really. And, um, well, I didn't. You guys ended up having, I got punished because I used to uh, probably say, being, being, being an older person, you kind of, you, you kind of get to the point in a work situation where you just cut through the bullshit, to be honest, and you just don't have the time for it anymore. And you're not going to entertain like theatrics in a work environment. You just want to do your job, do it well, enjoy it. And so um, I was right, probably like a little bit uh, uh, too much for the management, to be honest. So, I mean, <laughs> my days off were split, a Friday and a Sunday. I was never given two days off oh, in a row. Right. So, like, you yeah. guys had two days off. So, I know that a lot of times, like, you go to Hako in beach or try and go somewhere for a weekend. And I think, you know, quite a few of you guys kind of did go off weekends. And I could just never manage that. Um, yeah, so... Yeah. So, I mean, and Costa Rica is quite expensive. It's surprisingly it expensive, is expensive. I was, for, for what you would expect and what you are earning. Yeah. Yeah. I was definitely very surprised at how expensive Costa Rica was. Um, and that's, so in Thailand, we, so I was making a lot more than even the Thai teacher, which I felt really bad, but I didn't really know that until I think the end. But you, because I'm, I don't know, they, the school wants English teachers, they'll pay you well. So I, and it's, Thailand is so cheap. So, I mean, I traveled all the mm -hmm. time. I did pretty much whatever I wanted. And I still was able to like save money and stuff. So it was, it, yeah, with the, the cost was also, it was much better in time, able to do a lot more in that way as well. Um, I mean, yeah, like obviously the people were great in both places. Um, yeah. And yeah, we had a lot of fun in Costa Rica. We kind of did a lot of, things closer to we maybe had like little parties or went to I'm forgetting the name um oh that's not good I already forget well like little bars near um oh my god was it Casamia or something like that with the with the with the saddle bar stools you're probably yeah. not thinking of that one. I love that one because it yeah, just reminded was... me of Home Ramia, Texas, baby, with those saddle bar stools. I love those. And the bull yeah. that nobody rode and the really yeah, bad karaoke such singing. Weird, such a random place. Um, but that it was fun. So, yeah, we had a lot of fun. I think just to, seeing the countries, I definitely saw more of Thailand and was able right. to explore a bit more. And... But at, but, the yeah, end of, I, but at the end of it, you would encourage like any native English speaker to go off and do this, like go off and teach English somewhere and just really enjoy it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think it, it really, it really like changes you. I think, I mean, it wasn't the first time I'd lived overseas, but I remember I mean, living to me, living overseas and like living, 
doing it alone, it's, mm. it changes your life. You, you do things that you never thought you could do and you figure it out and then you're like, yeah, I can do anything. It's, right. um, it's awesome. So, I mean, I went to, I moved to Thailand alone. I had never taught in my life. Yeah, I met all these amazing people and taught a hundred students and, you know, was in Asia. Yeah. You know, the language was something I didn't even understand. I couldn't read anything because it's all different, um, like, alphabet. Is that even what they call it? I don't even know. But, yeah, um, it is. I mean, it, it is. It's. It, I yeah, mean, I use the term alphabet. Yeah, but I mean, the characters of the of the language are completely different. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, completely. And I was like, I could actually. My students were trying to teach me Thai because they were um, very difficult. But I do. Yeah, I learned like numbers and stuff. It was kind of cool. Um, and yeah, you just meet people. I'm actually planning a trip with some of the teachers that I met in Thailand. Um, mm -hmm. We're trying to get together. So hopefully, but yeah, you just, I mean, this is two years later or. You do. I mean, than, and you like, don't, three like, years I mean, later. you and I haven't had a lot of interactions since like I left Costa Rica just because of life and, and different things. And you know that I was in like a pretty bad place when I was there. And, but you know, we'll just start yeah. chatting again and it's like no time has passed. I mean, we just, I don't know, the bonds yeah. there are just, I don't know, and the I, bonds there yeah. are just something. Exactly. And I think there's something about, you know, obviously I have friends here and it's, it's great, but we've bonded over different things. Like mm -hmm. I met, you know, a lot of people in college when I was drinking and partying and now I don't care about that but it's like when you go to these places you meet people with similar ideas and they're all adventurous and they right. all are open to new right. things and learning things and it's like okay I and you're in I it together with like these people you're in a foreign in a country way. where you none of you are native speakers of that country generally that's why you're teaching English there and like you exactly. have that bond of your language and that sort of bond of your culture, which even though we had like some, a couple of British people and, and, and mainly Americans and Canadians and then this sad little South African come New Zealand, come Australian, come US kind of person mixed in there. And you're right. Like you've all gone there for sort of similar reasons. You, you hang on right. to each other in some respects because you understand each other and then still go out and enjoy and, and get and experience the culture that there, but there's just this bond. It's, there's a bond when you are an yeah. immigrant and, and we, we were not all immigrants because we were not going to stay there, but we were, we, right. we were having the immigrant experience together and that does bond you. Right. It, yeah, it does. Like you, you know, everyone who was there had at some, was new at some point. Mm. So they kind of, you know, helped you out and showed you the cool little places. And then it's, yeah, yeah we had a high staff really, turnover. So there was cool. always somebody new to help. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, that didn't happen in Thailand either. Um, yeah. It was a lot of, yeah, that was another thing. In in Costa Rica, there was really no like dates for terms. It was kind of the classes were always just ongoing. Mm. And in Thailand, it was a school, so it was you know first semester ends right. in September, or whatever, mm. or October. So, um, yeah, that was another thing. But but yeah, there was always new people to meet um and yeah it was a lot of it was a lot of fun I had so much fun it was it um, was a lot of fun but now yeah. I want to know where you are off to next <laughs> so my my COVID actually obviously was is terrible um but it kind of 
was good in a way. It got me to stop and really think about my future plans. And um, I was going to just actually head off to back to Asia, but, you know, another temporary thing, but it would have been awesome. But um, so I'm actually going to go to back to Australia. Um, that's the plan. So I've been wanting to study again, um, get into like social work. So that, you know, was something I was thinking of doing. And then I've always wanted to go back to Australia. So I kind of combined the two and I'm gonna hopefully soon be in Australia whenever they decide to let in their students. Um, awesome. So it's just a waiting game, but yeah, I'm so excited. I think, I don't know. I felt at home there. It just felt, and I mean, and you know, I, when, when we start talking about Australia, I don't stop talking because I oh. loved Australia so much and I still talk to my friends there. And I mean, it's been, it's been, I think six years, it'll be six years, like in September since, since you I left. left. Okay. And yeah. just a little bit of context for, for people who are listening, you were there for two years with your ex-partner. Yeah, and then two you years. had to leave. Okay, so you had two yeah. years of living there. Um, yeah. And then he was had a work visa and then um, you left after that. But I mean, when we were in Costa Rica, you were teaching, tell, when you found out that I'd been living in Australia, you were like, oh my God, I love it. Yeah. And I understand what you are saying because your feelings about Australia are the same feelings about of mine of North America, the US and Canada. Exactly. Like, I just feel at home there. Like I touch down and I smile because it just feels like home like it's exactly. in the cells of my body right yeah I yeah and we yeah uh, we have that similar we get, get it we get the feeling so um yeah I mean I still watch like Australian shows sometimes I still I talk to my <laughs> friends all the time um, um yeah i'm very excited for for that okay. um did i answer your question you did answer my question i <laughs> I, my, I just got a little note saying our internet connection is unstable so you just froze for a second but you're back uh, okay. um and so um you're going off to australia you're going to go off and study you're going to go and study social yeah. work and yes. and we'll work there after you have studied your masters um yes and really uh give it a go i'm assuming you're going to give it a go for full immigration at some point yeah so i've spoken to i mean that is my my goal and i have spoken to different migration agents and they've all said the same thing pretty much like my path to permanent residency is there um right with studying social work because there's um big demand for social work right now mm -hmm. or and like always i feel like always um yeah so that they're when they heard social work they were like you're gonna have no yeah no issues so yeah i mean when i get there i kind of have to try and branch out as much as I can and, you know, get my, I don't know. Context and you know, networks. With work and and, I, yeah. Exactly. And try to, you know, hopefully I can get a job that they'll sponsor me. That would be awesome. I don't, um, personally, I I don't, I I'm, not, I'm not an immigration who, consultant, as you know, but I lived there for 10 years. I lived in Perth, not on the other side where you're going to be, but I honestly don't feel it. And if you want to get sponsored, yeah, I could probably that. get you some contact. I can get you contacts in Perth. I've got social work contacts in Perth. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> um, I mean, but I never, I'm uh, sorry. No, no, no. It's just, there was, a, oh, there's a, I think, um, you kind of broke up a little bit. No, I know. I think, uh, um, I'm bad living back with my parents as my listeners know. And I think my mother has decided that this is time to go online. So. 
<laughs> so the connection nice. yeah so i no, mean I absolutely like pretty good yeah so so branching out to networking and that kind of thing it's it's just the way the things that you've got to do what you've got to do yeah exactly and i think i don't know i just feel like i don't know I, meeting new people is i mean it's not easy you know to meet a bunch of new people but i feel i don't know i enjoy meeting new people so hopefully I can, you know, meet the right people. And I'll, I'm lucky that I do still have connections there. I'll be in a different city than where I lived before. But I mean, at this point, I'm like, I'll, I don't care where I live. You know mm. what I mean? As long as my end goal is to live there. So, you know, if I have to you live. You do the time. In, you do the time if you want to do exactly. something you literally do the time you do the time you exactly. do what you need to do um and the one thing that i've learned having to ebb and flow for me because it hasn't always worked out the way i wanted to is sometimes you land up you end up somewhere where it's better than you actually realize and you end up making like these new networks and these new connections that are just as strong or just as amazing and suddenly you kind of off in a different thing and you end up settling somewhere where you think okay i hadn't really considered that one Ex yeah exactly and i i think so I, I lived in melbourne before loved melbourne in my head that's where i'm i will live at right. some point like that's where i will end up but i'm studying i'm going to study in adelaide mm -hmm. and i don't know who knows you know i might love Adelaide and meet people there and never want to leave so it's yeah you kind of have to be open to I don't know flexible I guess so I mean my end goal is to be in Australia I don't care I mean I care a little bit where I live but like if I like I've never been to Perth well if I have to move to Perth and get sponsored in Perth well okay, I'll, I'll go for it. It's kind of, exactly. I don't know, being yeah. flexible. It's kind of part of the fun. It's part of the adventure. Um, I agree. Yeah. And at the beginning, I said that you and I had had a, like a shared interest in spirituality and different modalities. And I think you and I have this kind of shared belief where um, you kind of get sent somewhere or you kind of get guided in a certain direction and, and it's the best yeah. for you. You may not think it at the time or you may have uh, like something else sitting here and and mm -hmm. I've opened yeah. myself up completely. I mean, I was very specific about where I wanted to be in the US and now I've experienced Canada and and now I'm just right. like, I love North America. I love it desperately. I love both countries and I'm just going to open it up to the universe to decide where I'm supposed to go and just hope and pray that it kind of works out uh, the way that I'm picturing it. Yeah, exactly. I think, right. And I, I used to plan, you know, every single step along the way, but I feel like I don't do that anymore. I plan the end. Like, like I, keep, I said, I want to be in Australia. Well, the right. in-between of that happening, I have... You know, I have somewhat of a plan, but it's all going to work out and I will like meet the people that I need to meet. I will, you know, get the jobs that I need to get. And I just right. feel like the experiences in between are going to. And it's weird because I feel like. Like COVID is awful, but I feel like the reason I got stuck here for a reason because yeah I was able to spend my I was able to spend time like with my family my grandmother uh she passed away but I was able to like you know if I didn't come home I wouldn't have seen her before that mm -hmm. so I'm like oh I was like meant to get stuck here kind of right. for that and then I was able to go to Canada for two months and visit my other family and spend Christmas with them, which I had never done. So I'm like, oh, well, yeah. if I wasn't stuck here, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And also, even with Australia, all these plans were made because I was able to stay here and kind of 
stop and think about what I wanted to do instead of just kind of jetting off to the next place, which is fun. Mm. But yeah, I almost feel like being stuck here, I hate it, but it, it was for a reason. And I kind of, um, looking back on it, yeah, I, there was a lot of, there's reasons that I was here for this long and I had to get stuck here. But um, yeah, so I, I definitely believe that. Um, yeah, so we on that. There's a lot of I don't know. Things happen for a reason, for sure. Yeah, I, look, I completely agree with you. And you find when you speak to a lot of people through this pandemic, a lot of people are sort of saying very similar things. I had to stop. I had to think. I had to go inward, which is basically what yeah. the design of this pandemic is. You know, everybody has different ideas. But, you know, I am with you. I'm stuck here in South Africa. I hate it. However, my father just turned 86. My mom just turned 71. They're much older. Over the last 18 years, I've been an immigrant, and this is the longest time I've spent with my parents in 18 years. I'm recently reconnected with a couple of friends that the, the relation, the friendships are so much stronger now, and it's been really good yeah. for us. And we used to you know, catch up when I came back here once or twice, and then I was going back home to Australia, or I was going on to somewhere else. And so... Um, there have been absolute, um, and, and, and I came up with the idea for this podcast, which I love. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I hope my listeners are having a lot of fun <laughs> listening, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And, and I really hope that it helps. And so on that end, on that vein, um, I just have two last questions for you. Um, and okay. I asked them to, to, to everyone. And so moving to Australia or moving on with your plan, what are you afraid of? um to do with going really like the next do you step? have any fears with the next step or did you have the fears like a few months ago and then you just pushed through them and thought nah I don't have time for this I'm literally going to do what I want to do yeah I think I um I mean I do have some fears I don't I have a few fears right now. I just feel like I'm afraid of possibly making the wrong move or something. I think with, you know, with the visas, you need to be so right, um, right, specific right, or right, that's right. not the right word, but right. you need to meet all the requirements. And I, right. I have that in the back of my mind and I will for the next five years probably. Um, but so that's kind of a fear. But I think most of the fears have were before they were, right. you know, okay, I'm applying to school in Australia. Right. Is this the right thing? Is this going to work out? And then I was just thinking, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah it's going to work out. It. And I just feel it. And I think I don't know, people ask me like what I'm going to do for work after I graduate with, for, with my social work degree. And I don't know. Um, and I think that's okay too. There's so many options, but I just know, I feel, and I felt this way for a long time that I just need to work with people in some way. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, maybe in a school, like with the students that I, you know, they're that age that I had in Thailand or something that was I don't know. That's just such a cool age and they're so cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really don't know what I want to do, but I think I've gotten over that fear and now I'm just going for it. And that's awesome. Uh, and that's where you feel the most kind of powerful because you know that things will change. Things possibly can change. You may be throwing some curveballs. This is life. 100%. But if you don't take that, le that leap, if you don't take that risk, the reward is not there. And you right. realize when you've done it so many times is that fear comes and goes and it's always there. There'll always be something that you're afraid of. But the last thing yeah. I want to do is be, you know, well, I'm going to be cremated. So I'm not going to be put in the ground, but basically to die and think, why didn't I, why didn't I, why didn't I, why didn't I like, exactly. you know, you're going to get a job. You're going to get the job the same way you're going to get a job at the end of any, um, any 
university degree, you'll find a job. You always right. do. You know, you kind of get, it's the same in Canada. I think it's the same in the US where you get this grace period of so many years to figure it out. And with that mm-hmm. grace period and a, and a skill that's needed, somebody's going to hire you. Right. I think, yeah, like I'm not, it's funny because I'm not even worried about jobs. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even, I haven't even thought about that. I think, yeah, it's funny. It's just gonna, exactly. It's gonna work out. Um, I think, I think what gave me the most comfort was when I spoke to different, I spoke to two different migration office, like agents from different companies to get Mm -hmm. their thoughts. And they both, when I mentioned social work, they mentioned, they were just saying how I'm not going to have an issue. They were so confident um, even with like, my accounting background, they mm-hmm. were like, ooh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to migrate to Australia with that because it's so in demand. And then right. I said, well, I want to study for social work. And they said, you're you're good. Like, yeah. it's on, social work is on all the lists for the skilled, I don't know, skilled immigration Sk- lists or whatever. Skilled workers, uh, yeah, yeah. Skilled workers list or skilled, yeah. Exactly. And social work is on all the lists. So I'm like, Oh, okay. Once they said that I was like, all right, I'm going to be good. Um, I, I I do fear that that list will change because it can. Um, It can, but also I will tell you having worked in the social work area, I worked in foster care in Australia for three years. It was my last job there before I left and worked with a lot of social workers. My degrees are in psychology. I will tell you this, the burnout rate for social workers and psychologists is extremely high. And um, not everybody has like this kind of belief and strong tenacity to do this kind of work and they burn out and they stop and um, they take some time off or they change their jobs. Um, Young, young people that go into it don't realize what it works. I mean, I worked with people. I worked with a woman who basically just was like, nah, I'm sorry. This is so (laughs) not. uh -uh." So, yeah. There's a very high burnout rate and I just don't see it. I don't see it going down. I really don't. It, it, it was in demand when I was there like three, three and a half years ago. So I just don't see it changing, yeah. but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I think, right. I mean, I'm not super worried about it because I think social work is, yeah, will always be in demand, I feel like. But um, mm-hmm. I guess that is like, It is a worry I have, I guess, because that's not in my control at all. No, but Uh, as you get there and as you branch out and as you start to speak to people and your professors are telling you the same thing, you'll just kind of start to feel more and more relaxed about it. And um, then you kind of just realize as you go through it, like, yeah, this is not going to be a problem. Which brings me to my last question. What do you feel confident about now with this new move? Um, hmm. I think, I mean, I guess I'm confident that it's, I feel like it's confident. I'm confident that this is a place where I, or I'll finally feel at home. Like I belong. And I mean, obviously I'm back at home where I grew up, but I, it's so bizarre. I don't feel like I belong here and I've told my family that and they think I'm kind of crazy but I just don't I don't feel I think you know when that's all when this is all I knew this is where I was going to be forever right and I don't know I just felt such a connection with Australia that I think I will finally feel at home and I'm gonna just go there and as if I'm not leaving and yeah hopefully it'll all work. And I I think when you feel it, and and I I kind of feel the same way for you. I mean, you've kind of had this connection there and you're making very concerted plans. And at the end of the day, I just believe in, in sort of a certain energetic frequency. And if you just believe it will, I mean, it's, it's going to go where it needs to go. And that brings me back to when I said, when you said earlier, you know, you want to go back to Thailand. I'm like, hell, you can do that from Australia, Thailand and Bali, Indonesia are the two 
top destinations yeah. of all Australians going on vacation. <laughs> yeah, I, I found that funny because when I lived in um, Australia before, I went to Bali because everyone in the US thinks Bali is this amazing place and very mm -hmm. high scale, like, or, no. you know, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's not, you know, what you're, it's, I don't know. I mean, it was beautiful and it was, it was very relaxing and luxurious and cheap. Um, but yeah, everyone goes to Thailand, which I thought was funny because I didn't think anything of Thailand in like beauty and stuff like that, but it really is. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. place. And yeah, I think I'll definitely go. I actually went to Australia from Thailand when I was living there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like a nine hour flight, I think, um, I think from Melbourne. Oh, from know. Melbourne. Yeah. You see, I went from Perth and to, to Indonesia and to Thailand from Perth. It's so much quicker. I mean, a lot of people actually sometimes come okay. across to Perth and then go up. So it's the quickest place to get anywhere in Southeast Asia. So yeah, okay. it was a shorter, it was a shorter flight yeah, for me. It was nothing. And then, I mean, nine hours after, I don't know, the flight to Australia. Right. And, anything is short. So right. uh, it's a crazy flight. Right. But and I did that for like uh, 15 years between New Zealand and Australia. Uh, I was in those countries for 15 years and having to come back to South Africa to visit. I mean, I only did it every three or four years because it is a bear is of a trip. How long is that? Oh my God. From New Zealand, it just depends on where you're connecting and how much layover time you have. I remember my ex-partner and I, we traveled for almost 48 hours one time because they had, the, <laughs> one flight had been delayed and they the, the, the airline actually put us in a hotel room just for a few hours. Wow. But I mean, usually it was about 27, 28 to 30 hours between layovers and flights. It's a bear. Okay of a trip yeah i'm trying to i mean i know from la to melbourne was like is like 16 hours right with so layovers you've got to get, I mean, yeah right so you've got to get like you've got to think you've got to get like from boston to to, to la, LA and then hours. like just wait even like those couple of hours or whatever and then you've got that big haul and then it's usually mm -hmm. to sydney and then you've got to wait and and you've got yeah. that last little flight and so yeah it just ends up yeah. being it's long <laughs> so yeah nine nine hours is is a walk in the park i know right it's but <laughs> um i just want to thank you so 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 much for coming and yeah. chatting to me um, thank you. It thank was you so having. good. I loved it. I loved it so much. And so thank you yeah, so nice. much for joining me today. Oh, thank you. I am excited to see your new podcast or listen. And well, the first one is just me droning on and on and on. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, please yeah. do. Please listen. And everybody out there, please, please, please listen. It'll be good. Um, thank you all for listening. Um, and if you want to see the video version of this podcast, please go to my YouTube channel, International Immigrant. And you can also follow me on Instagram, international underscore underscore immigrant. Um, again, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer in future episodes, um, please feel free to ask in the comment section on my YouTube channel or my podcast channel. And from my International Immigrant Journey to yours... See you next time.